Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Mwoko, once again, your host right here on the Farming Podcast. Today we have a lady, an entrepreneur, um, an agripreneur, as I said, CEO of the Crop Box. She's not a stranger to the show. Her name is Pumzile Chifunise, and uh, she's back to talk to us about agricultural value chains. She's definitely diversified her business since it was established in 2019, and it's, uh, I'm looking forward to just understanding um, how her growth has been over the past years, and maybe just let's unpack what agri value chains mean you know, and how we can take advantage of opportunities that exist within the agri value chains. If you have any questions for, for us tonight, please feel free to comment, ask the questions, and I hope we can answer them in tonight's podcast. Let's welcome Pumzile once again. How, how are you doing, Pumzile? I'm happy to have Hi. you on the show. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you so much for having me once again. Likewise, likewise. So maybe let's just quickly start with a quick summary of what the crop box is because you are the founder and CEO. For those maybe that haven't gone back to check the previous recording, but just maybe for the first minute or so, tell us about the crop box and what you do. Yeah, so the crop box is a B2B, B2C uh, food service uh, organization that I started uh, in 2019 from a registration perspective, but I spent quite a, a, a few months in the beginning of 2020 trying to establish what we would do. And so we started officially in 2020. And uh, we work with local uh, farmers, uh, manufacturers, and wholesalers to supply uh, three types of clientele. Number one, uh, wholesale and commercial clients, if you think of hotels, if you think of um, organizations who have a hospitality uh, division, we supply uh, kitchens, if you can call it that. Um, the second uh, customer clientele base that we have is uh, NGOs. We work with NGOs that are responsible for feeding schemes uh, in underprivileged communities. Um, and thirdly, household uh, customers. And that's essentially where uh, the crop box started from. We uh, first started um, by establishing a delivery service um, from the farm um, to uh, your household, um, specifically in Gauteng, um, Johannesburg and Pretoria. And we have a strong base of uh, households that we distributed uh, crop boxes to. So crop boxes, how it started was uh, uh, boxes of about 15 um, fresh produce from the farm. Um, and uh, the idea was to uh, shorten the supply chain between the farmer and the consumer, um, whereby uh, produce is taken directly from the farm and um, same day harvest into your household. Um, so as to, 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 of course, um, eliminate the impact of, of, of carbon in the environment, but also just to educate our consumers on, on, on farm to fork and the benefits of that from a nutrition perspective. So we have um, grown and, and, and diversified uh, from that base into uh, supplying on a wholesale uh, and, and commercial capacity. Yeah. And that's essentially what the crop box is. Sure. So crop box as a small enterprise has now started from farmers, going to wholesale. So you're definitely climbing the ladder around the agri value chain. You know, they say that small businesses have seen many opportunities across the agricultural value chain. Can you give us an insight of these opportunities and the value that agricultural value chains brings to small businesses? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, if you think of the magnitude of agriculture as a sector, I mean, it contributes some 3% to the GDP of South Africa, um, and agro-processing as a, a, a whole, um, alone, is one of the third biggest subsets of manufacturing into the country, to the GDP. And so... Um, Thousands and thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands, actually, um, is, is, uh, of jobs are, are created by every processing. Um, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, you know, at surface level. But as you mentioned, um, you know, agriculture is split into the three uh, sectors, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Um, at a primary level, uh, 
over and above farming, there's so many things um, that enable uh, primary farmers to be able to do what they do on a daily basis. Um, if you think of uh, the, the um, inputs that are required to grow uh, 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 produce and seedlings, fertilizers, et cetera, et cetera, um, machinery um, that are required uh, for, for plantation and irrigation, um, technology um, as well. Think of all of the uh, digital tools that have been developed um, to benefit um, uh, farming. We think of um, drones and, and, and um, uh, sorry, it just slipped my mind. And um, if you think of drones and um, tra traceability uh, platforms um, that we have globally, um, primary farming has moved way beyond just uh, planting a seed on the ground. But in order for you to do that, there's so many um, uh, 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 added services that are at your disposal as a farmer that you are able to tap into so as to not only grow your, your produce um, in a, a timely manner, but sustainably as well, which is the, the, the buzzword that every sector is tapping into, and so farming is no different. And so within all of those activities, um, there's lots of opportunities for SMEs to tap into, seeing quite a lot of e-commerce uh, platforms, for example, digital platforms that are getting a lot of traction and funding um, uh, um, from a um, uh, funder's perspective, and that just goes to show at how much traction uh, uh, um, some of these value-added services are contributing to primary uh, farming. If we go into uh, secondary farming, processing, uh, chopping, and machinery, and, and, and all of those um, elements that are required to process uh, raw materials into, um, you know, be it uh, a salad, uh, be it, a, a, um, you know, baby food or whatever the case may be, or any form of product, um, the value added service that comes into secondary um, agriculture is uh, where there's also a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs to be able to tap into just from their kitchen, you know, taking a, a, a carrot and chopping it up. That is a value added service that um, someone is, is, is always ready to procure from. Um, and then you would uh, have your uh, tertiary agriculture or tertiary industry um, that also enables um, agriculture to be able to function from farm to fork. Mm -hmm. um, and that is everything from uh, distribution, uh, your cold storage, um, never mind even what happens at an office level, you know, um, people like myself who work in, 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 in servicing the agriculture. Um, Literally, we're in between buyers and farmers and making sure that products and produce um, lands on retail shelves. And so all of those um, uh, components make up tertiary uh, industry of agriculture. And if you think about, um, we haven't even started to, to, to explore the, the, the topic of uh, exporting. And all the way from um, getting your produce out of the ground all the way to a consumer's table. There's so many components that make up the value chain. And as an entrepreneur, um, there's lots of opportunities uh, within that scope for you to explore. Um, and so we've seen with COVID-19 uh, uh, and the impact that it had on uh, the sector, just like any other sector, it uh, was a catalyst for innovation. And so as an entrepreneur, your responsibility is to go on the ground and to, to go and fact finding missions and to um, understand where the uh, opportunities, the backlogs, the, what the process is um, for you to see how you can add value yourself by identifying the innovative in a solution that you can bring into the sector. And so um, if you're speaking about a value chain, you're speaking about uh, what, what happens in between um, uh, you, when you as a farmer uh, finish your entire cycle of harvesting and you send it um, out to the market, um, there's so many uh, activities that happen in between your produce being consumed by a consumer and, and, and uh, that forms part of some of the value chain opportunities that exist. Yeah, well, I love how you really unpacked the value chain from primary to tertiary level. Um, I think it gives uh, so much into perspective of the role players that exist within the industry. So much so much more, like you said, the opportunities that exist. But tell me, Pumzila, you, with you having established Cropbox in 2019, but formally trading in 2020, what are some of the, the pressures that come with building a business to service 
um, various levels within the value chain uh, that, that, that we get in agri. So maybe you can bring your own uh, personal history uh, with, with, with growing uh, the, the, the crop box brand. So my question to you is, what are some of the challenges or the demands or the pressures rather that come with servicing the value chain at every level? Yeah, so the sector is, is fickle. Um, you know, you can imagine even from a, a farming and primary production perspective, timing is everything, yeah. right? And so um, I suppose that's where the crop box um, started to carve its own niche within the, the market of um, shortening the supply chain, uh, taking produce that has been freshly harvested um, directly into uh, to, to the consumer's uh, house. Uh, or uh, in the case of our com commercial clients from uh, the farmer to, to uh, the kitchen. And that's one of the um, things that we identified where we can differentiate ourselves because as I mentioned, timing um, is everything. And so when we got into the industry, we had to take a step back and to identify areas in which we can connect what's currently not being connected. And at the time that we started the prop box, um, first things first was that consumers are often, even though everything that we do as entrepreneurs, as service providers, you know, et cetera, et cetera, um, is directed to the consumer, um, the consumer, especially in the food um, uh, uh, production and in, in consumerism space, the consumers often left far behind in terms of the supply chain. Um, you find that from a uh, farm, between a uh, farm um, and a retail shop floor, there's so many steps that have taken place um, that the consumer at the end of the entire process is left with having to consume a product that has spent time on the uh, in transit, um, you know, temperatures, especially now in South Africa, and um, if you're talking about heat in the summer uh, uh, seasons, um, spinach would wilt uh, between uh, the market and the shelf store, uh, you know, there's so many things that can happen um, uh, uh, that can uh, hinder the, the consumer from uh, accessing the best version of uh, produce. And so in our um, investigative process that we did to identify where in the market we could fit in, one of the, 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 the things that we um, identified where we can uh, um, differentiate ourselves was to shorten the supply chain, um, to shorten the, the, the time at which the consumer gets their finished product at the end of uh, the, the entire cycle between the farm and um, their uh, refrigerator. And so, I suppose that is a principle that we have used throughout the entire process as we are trying to grow our business to say within the entire industry, um, what are some of the opportunities we can identify for ourselves um, to, to, to bring value to um, what people are struggling with or that sometimes don't even know that they're struggling with and, and at the time the solution that we brought along was um, farm to uh, fork uh, shortening the supply chain fresh as possible. And then what they, that, that um, did to was the um, idea of whole uh, wholesale and commercial foods. Um, a lot of the times buyers in retail or in hospitality uh, industries and sectors don't have the time to go from one shop to another to try and get the cheapest but yet the best uh, quality of uh, produce and what we wanted to do was to uh, assist them from a pricing perspective and um, we, we are competing with other wholesalers to uh, uh, bring them the freshest uh, fresh produce but also and um, what we are bringing on the table was the component of um, the, 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 the fresh farm fresh type of farm to fork uh, component, you know, same day harvest. And that's what um, a lot of the, the, the clientele that we have now um, were drawn to, the fact that we go physically to the farm to um, get uh, fresh produce and, and, and supply them in, in whatever form that they're looking for. And, and a lot of the times that we found was um, the, the, the whole uh, produce um, uh, uh, sector 
was a commodity that a lot of uh, kitchens were looking into um, uh, uh, getting directly from the farmer uh, on, and so we could provide that link. Um, the fresher the, the, the produce is, the more they will be able to uh, do a lot um, with it. And that also fed into NGOs. Um, it takes a lot of coordination and uh, manpower to uh, put together food parcels, which were very big in COVID-19 as well. We also uh, saw quite a surge in our business. Um, you know, people were, were ready and willing to, to uh, feed the underprivileged. And that's where we came in to say, uh, over and above us coordinating and packaging do it in a sustainable uh, manner and underprivileged uh, uh, communities should be no different. Thinking about sustainability and, and, and uh, plastic free um, and fresh, uh, high quality nutritionist foods, um, we wanted to provide and to ensure that uh, underprivileged communities have the same access uh, uh, to that in as much as um, high MSMs were accessing. Um, and so our service to NGOs uh, uh, through literally crop boxes that were uh, prepared uh, by, in a lot of cases, unemployed uh, uh, young people themselves in those local communities um, is the service and the value offering that we put in, on the table to NGOs to say, we want to give you um, fresh uh, quality um, and well-packaged uh, uh, food uh, parcels for you um, and communities oh. and that also then fed into commercial uh, uh, clients where um, you're providing that similar service just without the, the, the packaging um, into uh, prop boxes where we uh, um, source produce whether it's fresh or frozen um, or processed um, and, and, and also what we saw was um, tapping into food products that are outside of uh, fresh produce. Um, you know, uh, we then uh, was exposed to um, fresh uh, or, or rather frozen uh, vegetables and food, which was what our uh, commercial and wholesale clients were looking for, as well as other um, grocery items, which is a space that we're also playing in right now. Um, if you think of uh, eggs, um, wet and dry uh, grocery ingredients, your um, staples like your rice, uh, your pup, um, all the way to canned foods. Uh, we're in that space where we, we, we are now uh, uh, playing to the tube of our uh, uh, kitchen and, and, and commercial and hospitality clients who do need the whole uh, basket, not just fresh produce. Um, and all of that came out of um, just spending time within the industry and uh, understanding how we can um, expand our offering um, over and above uh, uh, fresh projects. And so um, those are some of the opportunities that we saw um, that, that, that are in the industry um, that um, entrepreneurs like myself um, can tap into. And, and all of that comes into just understanding the value chain and spending time with clients on the ground to see what um, other opportunities exist uh, for us. You spoke about access to markets, uh, Pumzile, and some of the, the hurdles that a new entrant uh, would face or encounter when you know, trying to penetrate the, the various value chains in the agri-sector. Tell us about how these businesses can be supported you know, so that they can flourish at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, to your point, first things first, what every entrepreneur will tell you is the need for uh, market access. That's how we get our foot into the door, but that's also how we keep ourselves sustainable, right? Um, and a lot of the times, as I mentioned before, uh, it's, it's, it's not uncommon to have once-off uh, tenders or once-off opportunities. Um, and so it becomes very difficult to be able to keep your business afloat from one month to another if you are just uh, servicing one client that's on a one-to-one -one basis. And so it's very, very important for uh, buyers to look out of their radar, what they're currently uh, being serviced by, or who they're currently 
being serviced by and look at other ways in which they can create creative to unbundle to unbundle rather their um, supply chains by having um, the, the, the procurement uh, process to 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 to, to fit um, other small players, whether it's been uh, through um, subcontracting or um, unbundling, as I mentioned, the, the procurement opportunity where you, you separate the components as compared to one uh, contract going to one person, um, you, know, you break it up that um, you've got different opportunities that different entrepreneurs can possibly uh, see if they can uh, be able to service. Um, another, uh, thing that we as entrepreneurs trying to access and to go into the value chain um, need is logistics. Logistics is hugely expensive um, for, for uh, small players who don't have the fleet of uh, uh, logistics that, get, that they can uh, tap into when it comes to servicing clients. Um, everything from a four by four uh, right up to a four, five, ten ton of truck. Um, and in most cases, because you're in food, um, that truck has to be refrigerated, right? And so um, as a small player, some of the challenges and some of the needs that I have is for the logist logistical support. I mean, um, I still use my sedan. Um, and if I hire out a truck, I follow the truck in my sedan. And you can imagine um, my days of using that sedan, driving out to the farms, um, I've had heaps and heaps of uh, uh, um, uh, invoices from my dealership of, of, of me, my car having uh, mechanical problems because of driving in the incorrect terrain. And so um, logistics for me is, is a great need that I um, have in my business um, to keep it uh, not only afloat, but for me to be able to um, service my uh, clients in an adequate manner using um, adequate resources such as refrigerated uh, 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 um, mobile uh, vehicles. And what happens from time to time, um, other entrepreneurs that are in my shoes but experience as well would be called storage or even overnight storage if it's the case of dry goods. Um, and so um, the relationship that have with our wholesalers becomes very important because you can negotiate overnight storage and um, as you, you, you wait for the uh, for the shipments to uh, be complete from a supply perspective for you to be able to distribute um, your order to your client the next day and so if I had uh, storage facilities um, which I'm hoping I'll, I'll, I'll be able to get um, in the long term that would definitely add value and um, more value to my business where I can um, and supply and service my clients uh, overnight without any hassles and without also spending copious amounts of money um, for uh, storage uh, facilities, for example, um, uh, as well as logistics, logistics and, 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 and fleet rentals, um, as I mentioned. Not to say that um, we, we don't appreciate, because uh, I, I, my business is outsourcing. Um, I, I do quite a lot of outsourcing activities like outsourcing um, uh, uh, logistics, for example. So we appreciate all of the logistics uh, uh, partners that we have had to lean on uh, uh, in the past and, and, and going forward. Um, but as we build and, and, and strengthen ourselves in the market, um, it's important for us to, to, to own our value chain by um, having uh, resources that are in-house so as to eliminate um, our costs of, of, of leasing and rentals. And so, um, logistics and warehouse and storage, cold storage, or even just uh, a simple um, storage is, is one of the things that we look forward to, to providing a solution for in our business internally, so as um, to be able to provide a quality service to our clients. Yeah, thank you so much for your time this evening, uh, Pumzili. I think uh, we were able to get somewhat of a master class <laughs> around agricultural value chains because you unpacked it so nicely for us, gave us so many examples that we can relate to and understand and also bring it down to business level, you know, because again, not everybody wants to be a farmer, but there are many people who want to interact uh, and trade within the agri value chain and also support farmers, support buyers, support sellers, and also, you know, find their way around um, um, what niche they want to focus on, especially within their value chain. So wishing Cropbox all the success. 
Um, I hope you come back onto the show just to tell us a little bit more about the, the how you've diversified your offering within Cropbox. But we'll keep that as a secret for now to make sure that people watch uh, and tune in for when you come back onto the show. But thank you so much for your time and for your insights today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. That was Pumzi Lechifunise. Um, she's the CEO and founder of The Crop Box. And today we're speaking about agricultural value chains. And I think the words that were going around today were small businesses, access to markets, buyers, sellers, value chain, primary, tertiary, uh, at primary, secondary and tertiary levels within the agri sector, price negotiations, business, markets, uh, you know, wholesale. These are some of the words that uh, were flowing through our conversation today, just to give you an insight about what really is the agri-value chain and what sort of activities happen within this space. So if you thought farming was just about putting a seed on the ground, then uh, I think you're in for something because there is a whole lot more that happens within the sector. So I really hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. And I will catch you next time on another episode of the Private Property Farming Podcast. Take care.